I can shut down all my social media channels tomorrow. No. I'm not attached to them at all. Yeah. I'm I'm in love with the process. The biggest lesson that I learned from my first manager was if I can't trust you, it doesn't matter how smart you are. I do feel that people need direction. My point of view in life is that 99% of the world wants to be led. They don't want to be managed. My 30s, all of my 30s was just jam-packed. Jam-packed. And I loved my calendar. Uh, you're leading, you're running a startup, you have people coming in, uh, there is high visibility. I cannot do that. I just cannot. I cannot be breathing down upon people's necks saying, who are you, who are you, what are you, what are you, what are you, I often tell Vidur as well, he's like, I'm your father. I know what this is. Shankar, what are you going to scribble on this? I, I have no idea. I'm just playing with the colors right now. Yeah? It's <laughs> so cool. Like, it's so cool. I love the setup. It's just yeah. so inviting. and the, uh, the idea is to make every guest spend time doing something random and, and fun while also having a conversation. Oh, totally. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, the other day, I, was, I don't know who said this. Uh, there's an old... Uh, Biswa stand-up thing which came up where he says that we all learned how to draw scenery. Ah, scenery, scenery. Was scenery, those like, two hills. Oh, two beach makes sun. Make sun. Upa do birds. Oh, ek palm tree. Or ek nadi. And that house. Uh, nadi. Ek house. Ek do window. Ek door. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We all do the same thing. Pura, pura desh sir vaisi banata. Yes. <laughs> exactly. We all do the same thing. And it's the most like why is a palm tree next to a hill, mountain <laughs> all that stuff you don't get. Um, no. I, I think that's a great point to start. How were you as a kid? How how was how was young <laughs> Ankur? Y- young Ankur was. You would perhaps know of this. Do you remember this uh, TV serial called uh, "Kyuki Saas Bhi Kabhi Bahu Thi"? Of course, it's seminal in yeah, yeah, yeah. television history. Yeah. Usme Mihir hota tha. Ha. And Mihir, Mihir was, was recast in between. Uh, uh, it was uh, uh, mar mar gaya, uh, exactly, uh, exactly. Uh, uh, you you know more than you should. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> and Mihir was this quintessential modern age Ram. Mm. Hey, this never do wrong, love everybody, respect everybody, blah blah blah. I was jokingly called Mihir in school because I was this kid who would never want to get into trouble mm. or thought that trouble was bad. Mm. I had these very clear definition of what is a vice, what is a good deed, mm. what's a good person, what's a bad person and so on. And I was, I was frankly quite stuck up mm. in this moralistic mm. high ground of yeah. what is right and wrong in yeah. life. Largely defined by my parents because that's the way they saw the world. And a lot of the indoctrination that happened around this is the right way to live life. Mm. So I was studious. Mm. Never smart enough to get like the top rank. Hmm. Top five mein aajata tha. He has Something a little like more potential. Oh, uh, bas, bas, bas. PTA meeting. Har PTA meeting mein. Thoda aur kar lenge. Thoda, thoda sa aur kar lenge to kuch ho sakta hai. Wo kuch kabhi nahi aaya. But hmm. main thoda sa aur karta na bhi nahi chata tha. And, uh, and always the, the love of the teacher. And it's like, you know, isko dekho. <laughs> like I was like the Sharma ji ka beta in Delhi. <laughs> but not being the Sharma ji ka beta. That was it. And... Yeah. Uh, and I think I grew up knowing that education is the only way out in life. Hmm. Uh, there is nothing else that can happen. Hmm. Business was not uh, looked favorably at yeah. because it didn't come from a business background at all. So chasing profit was like a sin. Chasing money was a sin. Hmm. Thinking of money was a sin. Hmm. While you needed it for everything that you wanted to do in life. Yeah. Education was the only way out. Yeah. You worked your way through the ladder. It, there was just hard work and nothing else that you would get you there and uh, no shortcuts mm. just no shortcuts and keep everyone happy mm. while you're at it yeah. and so never never rock the boat never do anything that you shouldn't be doing never say anything directly mufat nahi banna hai mm. jo tum andar soch rahe ho wo agar tum kisi ko bol doge to then that's not the right thing kyunki unko thes pahunchegi mm. and so it was just very cushioned uh, world of uh, what is right and wrong and and how things are I I think of that time a lot. I think I've, I, as I've gotten older and I've had kids, I've thought about that time a lot more. Uh-huh. So I was quintessential. Half of family were doctors. Half of yeah. were engineers. Doctors stayed in India. Engineers went to America. Very like <laughs> straight up. Straight up. Um, Playbook, yeah. And because of the family of doctors and dad, like my my family was and still is like a multi-specialty hospital, right? Her specialization, you'll find one person. So as a kid, for me, like medical treatment was like, I just go to this uncle, this exactly. aunt, this grandfather. Uh, but... I have, a, like for me, it was like, you know, you can skim through just being smart. Like yeah. you're okay being above average, being average. You didn't have to put in that much more effort. Why do you want to put in that much more effort was the thing because you felt like you're 
why do i have to study so much um did you like studying though depend on the subject ah. so for me it was so computer something i gravitated towards very early or as soon as i got it um and i was like i want to code i want to do this stuff um you get me here math and i want to run away but <laughs> i did engineering eventually it's the thing um but i was curious about things that weren't necessarily taught mm. in school and interesting when you're curious about a lot of things and people don't give the answers you go looking for it today of the internet but we didn't have i mean i still remember the dial up modem sound uh, which which <laughs> when it yeah it came in yeah but it became that became about that how do i find ways to follow my curiosity find things i'm interested in um so i was interested in pop culture interested in music i was interested in how you know films were made mm. that was my whole space of curiosity what are you curious about i was curious about the space that was oh, that's yeah. the only thing i know about as oh. the only i i think this was class 7th or 8th uh, i mm. think i think it was 7th mm. on my birthday my masi she gifted me this book called the big book of space mm. which was actually a big book it was mm. like twice this size or something and it had everything from the solar system to the galaxy to the last page was also about aliens mm. and so it covered the entire span yeah. of it and i just fell in love i remember just reading it over and over and again imagining myself to be an astronaut what it would be to yeah be outside and uh, t- television that that time was restricted this was uh, doordarshan and ha uh, this was just doordarshan right yeah. dd1 dd2 metro that was as far as you could go so there was nothing out there and science yeah. fiction was uh, hardly anything yeah. so books were books were your uh, your escape if you will and i yeah. and i remember reading this book called contact i don't mm. know if you've seen the movie carl sagan yeah, i've seen the one It, like that was that was a movie that was my dilwale dulhaniya le jayenge <laughs> movie before dilwale yeah. dulhaniya le jayenge yeah. happened to yeah. me it was it just it just stuck and then around 9th or 10th is when x files came mm. oh, and we didn't true. have cable television mm. so for me x files was about going to a friend's place to watch it mm. and the friend and me uh we shared this love for aliens and mm. we believed that the government is hiding something we believed that <laughs> area 51 existed we believed that the roswell incident in 1940 i still believe it's there i still course, believe it. 100% is there uh, the roswell happened in 1948 we have yeah. been contacted and blah 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 so um, with that belief uh, him and i jammed on on it and it was just yeah it was to begin with stars and then this conviction that we were not alone yeah. you know there the points in life and and i'm sure that happened to us you know, as you grew older and I, i want to tap into the the astronomy one yeah. and, and the space one mm. and and all and you were going to the us but not the journey of what you were going there to study but sure. there's this point where you know we put ourselves on a track mm. and we say this is what i'm going to be doing this is what i'm you know this is my passion and this is what i'm going towards and sometimes that when that passion starts gravitating towards profession mm. something clicks right we like okay this is not a this is not what i thought it would be was that the click that happened oh, 100% 100% i i uh, when you read a big book of space <laughs> it like you, you feel like you're the astronaut drifting yeah. and that's all that you got to do yeah. it's like so many people want to start a restaurant because all that they visualize is oh my god the food coming in and people just go <laughs> uh, but no one's looking at the kitchen where oh. the thing is like ban raha hai aur and it's like low I mean, if you've been in the kitchen, if I have friends who work in the F&B industry, that is not a Thought job. The, not the. I wouldn't wish a restaurant on any of my friends, perhaps not even my enemies. Uh, and uh, there's this fascinating article, blog rather, which I read. I think about seven or eight years back. Uh, the title of which is, "The world has a fascinating amount of detail." Hmm. And the blog simply was that from a distance, everything looks really simple. It looks. very non complicated but only when you get into it do you realize that everything in life has this fascinating amount of detail mm. and only when you begin to appreciate admire and be okay with the detail do you actually click with it or not yeah um and it just hit me when i was a student of uh, astronomy that the level of detailing that it required for me to live with that 
was was not something that enamored mm. me it wasn't like i i love to be on the surface i i wanted to be called a nasa space scientist <laughs> but not have anything to do with what it takes to be a nasa space scientist yeah. i was like i just show up one day yeah. like kahan jana hai mars yeah. okay mars jana yeah. like but but not go through yeah. any of the detailing that is required and that just wasn't the 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 case and uh, the the exact opposite of that is uh, this weekend the, the saturday sunday my team and i uh, we had a two day workshop where we uh, for the first time in 3 years since we started we looked at every single thing that we do as a process and mm. we run the company as a process oriented mm. piece and i love it that way because that's mm. my innate personality so we looked at every single platform every single process everything that goes on and how it goes on and so on and at the end of it it was it was like a whiteboard like that and i stared at it and it was just one platform and not even one platform one it was a youtube long format content mm. that was it and it had filled up the entire whiteboard with just steps that it takes to publish one youtube long format content yeah. of about 20 minutes and i looked at that and i was like this is a piece of art it it just it's it looks like art to me because at the end of it nobody knows the amount of detailing that has gone into making yeah. this happen but i just love pulling it through every single day day in and day out three times a week now yeah. uh, blah 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 and that was the exact opposite to what i i felt like a astronomy student mm. to what i feel yeah. with content creation or for that matter even running a startup yeah. uh, that i'm just in love with the amount of detail it takes to win well i think when i think back on the time when i felt like that and it's one of my earliest ones right i always wanted to work in television mm. i'd rather always wanted to work in mtv <laughs> <laughs> my dream in life wanted to something with mtv one day right so and i go to film school and i was like direction felt like oh, whatever you're saying something on camera do it and i wasn't great at it um i i understood content so mm. like but i remember going to mtv and at one of my um and you're you're sitting on the edit for the first time because the, by then edits were like you you couldn't get edit machines easily yeah. Yeah, college had like a, you could maybe get like one hour in a week if you were lucky wow. in the college edit machine we were in a media school <laughs> right because machines were expensive, expensive they had yeah. two so all batches you could have two machines so matlab okay. and so when i go to mtv and they're doing it and i remember once we sitting on it i was doing something and um was the um, remit was um, so ragu from rodi's ragu raji ragu was my first boss and he walked in and he said that cut there is off and i was like i don't understand why it was off he said uh, you done a cross fade um you need to pull that cross fade back two frames and i'm like this there's so much there were 24 25 frames depending on what you're shooting on or or rather exporting on i'm like how do you know that he said try it i couldn't notice the difference but for years now i'm in tuned and i realized that till someone points out that the detail you might notice it mm. nobody else will notice it like i said you put that whole thing out so sure. not everybody will i think there's be a finite number of people who notice just did the sound effect hit right at the right moment sure. um did the plan go exactly as per this thing so it's a lot more about your own satisfaction yeah which is why you're doing it if if you're doing it for someone else then eventually you'll be like you can like for me direction was that direction was never fine tuned for me the edit was that like can you do it that way or put a script in get the line in the right point but it i've realized over time that that's it's all personal satisfaction yeah, when yeah. if you've gotten satisfaction out of the creation process yeah then it doesn't matter if someone's seen it or not uh, that that's so true that is uh, so 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 true and and i have i have such a massive amount of respect for editors because that's precisely the kind of detail that i cannot yeah. get into yeah. like i i can't imagine how raw gets finished yeah. at the hands of somebody's creative genius it's it's like magic to me it is genuinely like magic to me so so now let me give you a inside of where i learned editing because uh, i'll give you context so uh, when issuing reality tv our time uh, there were 7 to 10 cameras shooting people wow in shows and you're getting all that footage together you're lining it up you're then cutting off the randomness you're trying to build a story out of so for us it was like taking like hours and hours and days worth and bringing it down to like a 30 minute episode I so can't. in hindsight i'm like now this feels like ये तो हो जाएगा एग्जैक्टली दिस लाइक दिस लाइक चाइल्ड्स प्ले वाओ आई कांट इवन इमेजिन दैट यू नो यू स्पोक अबाउट प्रोसेस ओरिएंटेड दैट्स समथिंग व्हिच रियली कम्स आउट विद यू 
was there a point where you're like okay there are some process you feel like okay maybe i'm being too rigid about this do mm. i want to open it up do you have those moments oh i have these moments all the time i am uh, so i love this quote by naval ravi kant because that stands for so much of what i would love to do in life and try to do in life impatient with action patient with results mm. my process goal and objective is to do whatever we know has to be done and that will mean we will skip some things that we are not aware of mm. so the unknown unknowns and that's perfectly fine mm. like are are is my work ever error free no it's not but was the error noticed before it went in no which is why it went in mm. unless of course it was a, a choice like a lot of times i'm shooting my my youtube videos and i will say fumble on a word or yeah. pronounce it miscorrect and like no it's a part of though. your content exactly no, 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 no. looks forward to when his uncle going to fumble uh-huh, so exactly. he'll, he'll, there'll be a funny point at that time there will yeah. be there will be and you know i'll i'll, I'll play with it because yeah. i like playing with it and that makes me just be myself but is there say an error in the subtitle or an error in the edit or some shade and what not uh knowingly it will never go through unknowingly it will and we will then own yeah. up and and make that happen and once that is out i wouldn't fixate myself on what comes out of it so mm. patient with the results mm. it could take i'm super patient mm. uh, like it can take whatever it takes yeah. whether it's 6 months 6 years i couldn't care less mm. because i'm enjoying the process yeah. so i'll try and build a process where i fall in love with the process and if i fall in love with the process then till the time i'm in love with the process i'll continue doing it irrespective of the results and the day i'm out of love with the process i'll stop doing it irrespective of the results and that's why i often say i can i can shut down all my social media channels tomorrow no. i'm not attached to them at all yeah. i'm i'm in love with the process which is how we create them how we think about them the feedback that we get what we do about that blah blah blah, yeah. blah. that gets me up but not the outcome and i feel being that way is super important to create content especially it's amongst a, other things because otherwise you're stuck on it like it's a, it's a, uh, so it's a good question because so one of my closest friends akhilesh he uh, he and another friend ankur the three of us are really close and we have a whatsapp group so he was sharing something recently that he read on twitter and he asked this question is micromanagement a necessary trait for success kyunki almost everybody that we see who is hmm. at the top percentile of success yeah. is in some shape or form a micromanager right whether it's jeff bezos whether it's elon musk you pick up anyone even mm. in non business like whether it's say politics or it's even social yeah. impact yeah. there are anal about something creative people yeah, yeah. more so like micromanage seinfeld ka wo jo interview hai like i the reason why seinfeld became a success is because i looked at every single line and made sure it was funny yeah. my reaction to that was micromanagement in my opinion is necessary for success however you can either micromanage people mm. or you can micromanage systems a lot of people end up micromanaging people mm. which is a trait i admire that i cannot do that i just cannot i cannot be breathing down upon people's neck saying who are going to work kya kar rahe ho kab kar rahe ho ye wagaira wagaira mm. but i certainly micromanage systems i love micromanaging systems yeah. i'll design a process i'll set up a tool that measures that process makes it compliant and then my only and only job will be to just ensure that that compliance is happening mm. whether it translates into a people being micromanaged indirectly or a process or another tool or another agency i couldn't care less mm. i'm like ye kaam is samay tak ho jana chahiye tha aur ye tool bol raha hai ki nahi hua hai mm. iska zimmedar jo bhi hai wo haath khade karke apna kaam kar le mm. and agli baar nahi hona chahiye mm. and i will not speak to the person and keep pinging them and so on yeah. i'll just speak to the system or the process and if it's not working or it's breaking down a lot despite different people i'll change the process mm. if it's working and it's only people dependent then i will eventually change the person yeah. but i'll never micromanage people i'll just manage my systems i feel it also comes to the fact that you can't ma- micromanage everything anyway of course and so he uh, my take on micromanaging has always been that i am a micromanager mm. by trait uh, but i am a micromanager about the most random things so i will never the the bigger stuff will always be like okay it's macro wide point of view kuch chal raha hai chal raha hai i will micromanage like okay this word in this caption <laughs> could change or like maybe we can do something so it's it's and i feel that that way you're also like satisfying that part of your mind that yeah. wants to micromanage because 
micro managing people is a tricky one yeah wow. it is it is also you the other person might feel restricted in their own freedom of doing of course and that never it's never said you don't want because you don't want to be micro managed by anyone yeah. so why would you do to do that someone else yeah. yeah yeah i do feel that people need direction hmm. um my point of view in life is that 99% of the world wants to be led hmm. they don't want to be managed yeah and there's a big difference but a subtle one in that leadership is not about managing but it is certainly about laying an agenda and making sure that everyone's organized towards the agenda elon musk beautifully said that the company is a sum product of everyone in the organization acting as a vector mm. and uh, if you remember vectors vectors are not just about the speed they're also about the direction yaad hai yaad hai yaad hai so halka sa halka sa yaad hai two two vectors in opposite directions cancel each other even though they may yeah. be at the same speed and so on so if you have two people in a team you are that person in college who i would run away from <laughs> saying this guy knows all the answers because i know none of them uh nay nay but but it, it it's just such a well i mean it's a very geeky representation of what the company mm-hmm. is but i love it because it it just makes things simple for me yeah. it doesn't matter how fast you're running if you're running opposite in my direction yeah. and and that's what the company does so everyone doesn't matter how fast they are if everyone's running in the same direction it always adds up yeah if everyone's running in opposite directions or worse in random directions mm. then individual speeds don't matter yeah uh, and so often we see that particularly in large companies i've been part of one large company and it's like har koi apna apna kuch kar raha hai mm. and they are busy busy af yeah. like saans lene ka waqt nahi hai but none of that is moving the needle for the company yeah. and then kis cheez mein busy ho mm. bas busy hai kuch kar rahe hai and uh, and that that then becomes the the yeah. counterproductive way of thinking about it and, and that also happens because you know we we as com- when companies start off they're fluid and then we build structures because they get bigger because you need structure yeah and after a point of time the structure starts driving the work rather than the work itself true and then you get large enough where everything is about structure true um but there is a way and i'm going back to micro management because it's a mm-hmm. great point that is that if you're looking at it from the fact that okay this person can do this i don't have to tell them how to do it mm. all i have to ensure is that the the broader stuff is is well oiled in the machinery True. and um, i'm doing right by that person by not treating them like a machine but yeah. treating them like a human being and then everything else works yes is that machine and human being thing is where we get it wrong because that's i think that's True. the whole difference between a leader and a manager a manager is managers often treats you like you're a machine correct ye kar do ye kar do ye kar do ye kar do yeah and keep fine tuning that yeah not getting to that broader yeah. ways absolutely absolutely that's that's been my experience what have been your beyond this what have been your learnings as someone who's led teams led organizations and and stuff what has been your that people are people and not data points on an excel sheet <laughs> yeah. we are unpredictable we are biased we are emotional we are driven by acknowledgement we are driven by intrinsic motivation of what we care about the most and that keeps changing for us and we very rarely recognize that and that's why particularly in the startup world there is this uh, fascination and almost fetish around scale how does this thing scale ंग्रेटफुलीडरशिपीपलोर it should become harder yeah so if i meet somebody who's like oh mere paas a bahut badhiya team hai and ab to bahut asaan ho gaya and like yeah. ye gaya yeah company bhi gayi mm. sell the stock because uh, leadership by design has to get harder as you go up yeah because leadership is individual it doesn't scale it is personalized and that's the biggest lesson that i've learned don't lead by a one size fits all approach don't lead by who you are because one couldn't care less yeah you have to lead by who they are and what they would want and if you give them what they want and be very clear in what you want from them that's it 
it's it's unbelievable how things get done yeah which is part of the conversation we had at the workshop again and i was telling my team the biggest lesson that i learned from my first manager was if i can't trust you it doesn't matter how smart you are i love the quote and it stayed with me because everything changed in how i saw people and how saw my relationships with them irrespective of whether they were colleagues my team members my peers or what not if i can't trust you it doesn't matter how smart you are so everything has to start from trust i have to build an environment of trust i have to make it easy for people to trust me mm. and make it obvious for how i would trust them yeah. and then just let it be and if that happens communication the need of it goes down mm. the necessity of it goes down the criticality of it goes down you just know things will get done were you always someone who was process oriented i yeah yeah i don't remember at time i wasn't so i would say yes mm. um and i certainly like it it's an unfortunate answer because that seems to suggest i was born with it and people can't have it which is certainly not true people can yeah, be yeah, on yeah. it and i have certainly improved a lot in how my process orientation has been but i distinctly remember i was almost always like this mm. came naturally yeah how are you as a parent i'm completely the opposite <laughs> i'm not process driven at all my wife and i have the biggest conflict around that is she is uh, she's very methodical she's very process driven she's very matter of fact and uh, and my approach both towards uh, vidur our 11 year old and uzma our 5 year old is there are some things that they will learn even if we don't teach them correct i agree to wo sikhane ki zarurat nahi hai hame unko ek playbook deni hai a playbook that they would know pretty much like the one you were suggesting where in moments of doubt yeah. they have a reference guide yeah that's it we we don't have to teach them how to brush their teeth take a bath get ready speak a mm. certain language because there is no way that they can survive in this world if they don't know that yeah. so they will by merit or by force or by just the survival instincts that we are born with figure that thing out mm. but they wouldn't figure it out what it would be to say treat a human mm. they wouldn't know how to react if their friends started mocking them for being friends with somebody else mm. they wouldn't know what it would be to react uh, how to react if their friends were like oh the teacher is a, a, a duffer he mm. or she doesn't know anything mm. we will figure it out mm. or anything like that yeah. i'm just making this shit up so if you can give a playbook or a reference mm. guide that's our role yeah so it's not to be prescriptive it's not to be micromanaging you micromanage the systems yeah. and people will then eventually yeah. micromanage themselves that's at least my belief but that does mean that i am fairly lenient hmm. um with like koi farak nahi padta like that's my favorite hmm. line koi farak nahi padta <laughs> and she would often say kis cheez ka farak padta hai like what what really matters and i like you know what the truth is very few things in life matter hmm. we make them important but very few things in life matter what matters to me what matters to me is my health the health of my family my thinking ability and frankly that's it i don't have a fourth i really don't have a fourth like my biggest worry or fear in life is losing my loved ones mm. or losing my ability to think uh, and that then makes it very easy for me to yeah be a parent where i genuinely think ki ज्यादातर चीजों से फर्क नहीं पड़ता बट एक्चुअली डज दिस रियली मैटर इज आई हैव अ फ्लिप थिंग आई रियलाइज दैट द ओल्ड फ्रॉम द टाइम यू कैन अ पेरेंट यू एक्चुअली रियलाइज व्हाट थिंग्स मैटर मोर देन यू एवर डिड बिकॉज स्टिल देन यू नॉट लेवर ऑलवेज लाइक रैंडम थिंग्स यू वांटेड एंड यू स्टिल वांट रैंडम थिंग्स आई डोंट थिंक यू विल एवर गिव अप ऑन दैट बट एज यू आर ट्राइंग टू टेल समवन एल्स और अदर टीच समवन एल्स व्हाट शुड मैटर टू देम you realize that you also should you're getting a revision course in <laughs> in life loko <laughs> one second like um like i tell my mom say like, i finally get i get it okay I, I, that time like why are you telling me do this <laughs> not do this i'm like oh, i get it i yeah. uh, but 
some of the points you spoke about right just the things that they have to deal with it's all about navigating human equations relationships um dealing with emotions dealing with how um like the other day we were having this conversation about how f- like i didn't realize how early friendships are made and broken in kids lives and my daughter's like 6 and i mean i've already heard many times like she's not my friend anymore this one's playing with someone else this one's moved away i'm like <laughs> and then this point where classes were m- shuffled together shuffled, in a school yeah. and then she, all her friends were in the other section and she was like i'm like now you there's no right answer for this but it's always like okay this is how you deal with it maybe and so the more i tell her these things i am finding ways for me to deal with exactly. it myself exactly uh, which is why i say that being a parent has many 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 added benefits yeah. for the period of time when your kids are young uh, older i don't know uh, so i can't talk about that yet but um have you seen yourself change yeah yeah certainly absolutely i i see a lot of uh, i question a lot of things of what is as you rightly pointed out even important or not uh, necessary or not should be prescribed to somebody else or not and then of course in that prescription slash mentoring slash guidance slash conversation slash talk you begin to realize a lot of things for your own self as yeah. you mentioned uh, so that's wonderfully additive i think the biggest difference that has happened to me as a parent is this uh, not so popular opinion which by the way i've never shared with my wife so if you're hearing it i'd still love you i don't think there is any other love except that of a parent and a child i don't think adults love each other i i'd like to believe i love my wife and i'd like to believe that she loves me but i think there is a layer of other variables that we misinterpret as love and it could be anything like when you're young it could be physical intimacy yeah. when you're old it could be companionship when you are somewhere in the middle it could be even ambition or fueling it what not yeah so we call it love but at the end of it i genuinely today think that love is only what happens between a parent and a child it's a it's one of the purest forms of it it is just unconditional yeah. it is unconditional yeah. it is yeah. yeah it's just it is crazy how unconditional it is and how it happens in a second like in a second you were not that person uh, like that, there was this fantastic joke that i not a joke it was a stand up and and he was saying it meant it to be funny but it's real life it's like with your wife or for that matter partner you would take a bullet for her mm. right? so you would die for her mm. the second your child is born you would yeah. kill for that child yeah, i i've like, seen the same one yeah you would kill yeah you would become a murderer for that thing that was just inside the yeah. womb of your partner until a second back has just come out yeah. and you instantly become yeah. from a defender to this attacker and yeah. like mai jaan le lunga kisi ki agar isko kuch karne diya it's crazy and it's also like you don't realize how much it changes the way you live your life i have lots of friends who don't have kids and they like we see how much it has changed just the person you are in the li- and the way you live life um and some of them are making choices about um you know them having kids or not but I, one of the things i told them is that you have chosen to bring this person into this world now you, you got to make the most of the period of time when they're around because they're not going to be around you all and they eventually they'll do what, what we all did we all left home and we went in our own directions but it's also pure i feel because it's like when you tell a kid saying no but you have to do this uh, and you owe me this much you owe me this much kid guy i didn't ask to be <laughs> you got me you know um so this unnatural demands of of like no no <laughs> i have got you so you have to do this is a thing but i have also realized uh, the fact that i do have to it's very weird people don't believe this i am actually the strict parent at home uh-huh. um uh-huh. i am the person who can say no and put my foot down and be very stern and everybody else outside my house does not believe this wow yeah uh, but i can stand there and I watch someone cry that. and like roll i'm like no <laughs> so it is right um and i feel it comes from the fact that i know that game i have played that game with that 
kid throwing a tantrum for so long as a kid i'm like i know what you do <laughs> like exactly. you got you don't teach me this stuff i have i have, I have a masters degree in this right now <laughs> Oh, so true, so true. I I often tell Vidur as well. It's like, I'm not a bap. I'm not a bap. I don't know what this is. Whenever he's trying to be like, uh, lie or be sly about yeah. something. It's like, it's just so obvious. I also feel we're a generation of parents who have grown up aware of so many more things that go on in the world. Yes. That, um, which our parents didn't. They didn't. Um, like, they didn't. I've got to be with an I'm. I went through a period of my life when I was a smoker. The last period of time, parents didn't know. My dad was a smoker himself, so he is the one who caught me because he realized. I'm like, he's like, I know the trait. I know what. Um, but people didn't know, and I could get away with a lot of. Now I'm like, he's also looking at a world where, you know, you mentioned screens. Uh. We have a generation of people who have grown up with screens, not just for them to consume, but to. Almost like capture everything which their life True. has. We did a lot of stuff as kids that nobody knows about, which nobody needs to know about, and we we had so much more freedom to explore those. Now I can almost see a lens of there might be a camera around. Correct. Um, what will? Yeah, loka kya kaenge wala scenario now has been like multiplied twenty thirty x. And also the fact, as reading this uh, in a medical journal. that humans until this generation did not have a way of reliving the exact moment that they just lived mm. it's never happened before in human history yeah before photography was invented it never happened and it only happened let's say you know cave pe bana diya usne no ye hamari pehli date thi yeah. and the, it became like forever and ever stone man and stone women hanging out photography came but that was also delayed there's like the developing and now so khaw was up karo but never has it happened Instant. in the moment and what do kids do today they get themselves click and the first thing they sense is dikhao hmm. because they are reliving that moment yeah. and it was a fascinating journal article that that said we don't yet know what are the ramifications of this hmm. because it does have a emotional side effect that has still not been figured in its entirety that there is a certain response we get within our body when we live a certain moment yeah but we don't know what happens is if we relive that exact moment through another medium as instantly as it happens today yeah. does it curb the emotions mm. does it make it even higher does it elevate that feeling or does it depress it Uh, and uh, time will tell like for for all you know just like smoking was advertised and uh, promoted by doctors yeah. at some point of time yeah. and as weird as banal as it sounds there may be 20 years hence people saying you know what uh, clicking a photograph and looking at it is prohibited yeah they let you carry phones around all the time <laughs> <laughs> exactly like it's 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 a weird weird place to be in it's and i, I think about this often right because I didn't understand the concept of being present till the pandemic happened, and as I started to consume stuff around, right, I was like, "Because oh, I'm, I'm generally being this jittery person who, you know, that person sits and you get irritated because they keep, they like keep shaking. I am that person, right? I've always been that person. It's gone down now lately, and everybody knows that. You know that person, like that, 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 that's happening. <laughs> and I came across this concept because at some point you were at home, you had to figure out things you have to do. Yeah. and the, it just spoke about the fact that you know that instant reaction to move on to the next thing mm. to react to it you just need to kind of hold on to that like this show's name came from that it's like literally it's like how do you kind of and for me it was a tough thing to do still is like i am often this person jumping on to the next thing and um uh, pooja my wife says that you know you're going to give me a headache because i'm at home saying this this this, this I'm, i'm i'm like that Uh, my theory is that I throw a lot of paint on the wall and figure out what the pattern sure, is. Right. Uh, I'm not joining dots. I'm literally throwing paint at the wall uh, most times. But the more I got into this whole, you know, understanding what being present was, mm. I realize all it is is just saying you move a lot slower, and you tend to observe more. Like I have realized, I can observe more things now than I ever could, because I'm just saying I. Don't have to move on to the next thing. I know I don't have to, you know, swipe to the next reel. And whenever I do that, the more you recognize that fact, your mind starts telling you, "Okay, once again, you're going too fast," because you've you've put on that switch or almost like a regulator in yourself. 
because otherwise you can just it's like the matrix when you plug you in and yeah. just, yeah. just, 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 just clock 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 next yeah. thing next thing next thing yeah. next thing next thing and uh, all of this is a recent development if yeah. you really think about it at best what 150 200 years yeah. of our 75000 year of existence yeah. as uh, as a species yeah is this last 200 years that we've got onto this treadmill of sorts before even the treadmill was invented yeah. said ki next is kya next is kya next is kya like boredom was a thing and boredom was the genesis of conversations so of innovation of everything i taro ko dekh rahe hain when you didn't mola acha chalo ye sep kyun gir gaya mere sar pe i used to be this person i still am sometimes lie down on the bed look at the fan rotate it sounds bizarre but i actually made my daughter do this as a lie down just imagine what this could be yeah. um learn to imagine through boredom she like i don't want to be bored I'm like be bored come on hold on hold on to it yeah. um but i agree just, there is a power to it yeah. to being bored is this you just let your mind kind of go into any direction it is beautiful it is beautiful i remember watching a video of yours of i think you were speaking about what you do in your day uh-huh. and week or whatever And he said this thing about you, how you drink water in the morning. I was yeah. fascinated by how you described it. I know you fumbled there, so I remember it. He said, "Sir, gunguna the gun gunguna pani, gunguna pani, gunguna warm water." I was like, "So I do that. I do that warm water lemon thing in the morning because I I went more like alkalized and let's okay. do that and everything. But it just became a thing now. Um, and when I saw how you described your day." You also make sure your day has a certain pace to it, which is not like you're not going on like okay, wake up sixth gear, uh-huh. and then handbrake and then go to bed, which is literally <laughs> yeah. like how people should be living like <laughs> most times. But and you slowly moved towards that. Yes. Or was that always a no? No, it was a very very slow departure from what I was doing earlier. पहले तो I remember my my thirties, all of my thirties was just jam packed. Jam packed, yeah. and I loved my calendar to be tight, 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 like yeah. the blocks, like lit exactly. Stack, stack, stack I was like, "Yeah, meeting, yeah, meeting." No, beach. My four people have met. Yeah, fifteen, fifteen minutes. Then, 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 Uh, you're leading. You're running a startup. You have people coming in. Uh, there is high visibility, and uh, just like you, COVID happened. You just slowed down, and in that s- slow down, I also started to have a conversation with myself that I've been through this over the last decade. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I wouldn't trade it for anything else. Yeah. It made me learn a lot more than I thought I would. But do I want to do this for another decade? Mm. Do I want to do it for another? But yeah, it, it was it was a wonderful time, and and I think I I loved that time mm. so much more that I didn't want to ever go back to any other time. And then the question was, how do I design my life around this? Yeah. And thankfully, content happened because content gives me that freedom. And the way that I'm running my entire business and startup now, it it just is designed to not be. Fast paced. It's yeah. designed to be patient. It's designed to take your time. It's designed to not choke. Not just me, but anyone in my team as well. Yeah. Long gestation period. Nothing which is like one big call that we took on our content, for example, was we're not going to do anything that's trendy. Mm. Anything that we do would still apply if one were to watch it. After you're not doing the video of two people chasing each other with the captions, which every the <laughs> only thing you see on Instagram right now. Yeah. <laughs> or a Wes Anderson one. Ah. Uh, or 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 Chat GPT. How will your life change? Right. None of that. None of that. Uh, you would create content that is time agnostic which means you don't have to rush through things there is no news to be published there is no time yeah. to be there is no trend dying phenomena in your business or yeah. in your area which i love and that's helped yeah. a lot you also and 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 i'm guessing this was i know you briefly spoke about once is that you do also like have clear focus on on your health yes saying that um have a fitness regime have a um just in terms of how you eat everything else yeah um, was there again like a getting older scenario ah uh, getting older scenario the the big tipping you only realize that when you get older we, we only like, right. it's like yeah, you wish uh, one of my favorite questions is uh, which i ask my guests if i if i bring them in is if i were to give you x million dollars and depending on the person i would change the x 
for some 20 is a lot for some 100 is a lot for some one is a lot so would you take x or would you go back to the age 20 knowing what you know today mm. and i would 100% take the second option 100% like i would kill it mm. if i was 20 and i knew all that i knew <laughs> today like i would kill it i would be ruling the world without wanting to rule the world because that's the wisdom i have don't want to rule the world but uh, it's just so much that you learn while yeah. just living life i think if you are true to yourself where you don't take failures or obstacles as uh, something that's trying to block you but something yeah. that's could be potentially teaching you something yeah. new it's fascinating I, I was telling this to people I love getting called out in public because you started to call your own ads out I've realized oh, lately that's the best way of mitigating anything <laughs> right? it's like you, you start a book by saying this is the most useless purchase you'll ever make it diffuses everything yeah but uh, mutual fund is subject to market market <laughs> oh, yeah. you would when people call you out and you actually work on that and you fix it you only get better yeah it's as simple as that people call you out you work on that you fix it you only get better why would you be scared of getting called out yeah. it's only your ego it is just your ego nothing else to agar kahin se tumne us ego ko sambhal liya control kar liya the world will constantly keep telling you what you could do and could not do yeah and just pick your battles work on them fix them and you only get better yeah there's this is um um author and um um researcher called Brené Brown that Brené Brown talks and she's been a shame researcher for yeah, yeah. vulnerability yeah and she talks about shame in such a, like i first of all in my head up like once like there's a person who has researched shame for decades i'm like that's like first of all blew my mind like that's what she does i mean that's like a focus area yeah, yeah, focus. it's fascinating but i feel like and she spoke about shame in an interesting way she said shame something is almost inbuilt from the time you're kids because when you're a kid you are truly shameless at the beginning because you don't know like like my son is 8 months old he has no sh- concept shame. of shame yeah. like he will susu what susu what he fart in front of people or whatever he'll smile yeah. right yeah. but at some point time you're almost like it's, it's your ingrained in something if you do this uh, shame 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 ah. shame ah the shame shame were so many of those shame shame were even almost like those rhymes you would ha ah, it was like they were like they were this poetry and literature and structure and yeah. what not assigned yeah. to shame and as you get older then you start also saying at some point you become pride it comes pride when you are a teenager i am shameless about these things you want to say it because but you actually don't care correct we all have it correct but how do you kind of flip that around from from saying i'm shameless to saying i'm being vulnerable there's a big like difference over there and i and i feel that once you kind of figure a way to transition from one to the other um you are not doing it for show yeah at least my interpretation always been that being saying i'm shameless is means saying you're doing it for show yeah saying you're vulnerable means you're actually doing it because you are okay to exactly. just be vulnerable in front of people and exactly. um and just to be able to share and and i do this is whole like wisdom angle like you, you mentioned wisdom as a word and i feel it's that it's that when you realize that why you do things aren't for other people they're for yourself is where when you feel okay wisdom is kicking in um you know the uh, what do you call processor is finally processed all the information yeah. <laughs> of our entire lives in that and and who knows like yeah. i'm 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 43 how, how old are you uh, i'm going to 41 now yeah so who knows 10 years hence Yeah. we may be dissing the same thing that we're talking about right now and we'll yeah. be like nahi wo wo main tha yeah. but there's a new yeah. me now yeah. which which a completely different yeah. view of the world yeah. and how the world has also changed and you have certainly changed so i love the fact that we are we keep evolving keep changing mm. and uh, and i'm constantly surprised at how far along i have come in how i thought about the world and how i do today yeah while still being okay at that point of time with my view of the world and still being okay with yeah. my point of view of the world today um this is a question i've asked you before but i have to ask it again because i ask every guest who comes here saying if there's a piece of advice you got and i know there's i know there was one which we've spoken of before um that made you almost like look at the way you are leading life and say one second this it hit the spot mm. what would that be So I I gave you one which is around the trust piece yeah. which really stayed with me but I'll give you another one which also stayed with me in a meaningful manner and this was uh, my conversation with uh, Mohit Bhatnagar from Sequoia who was uh, he was the lead investor for for nearby and at some point of time uh, living through my 30s ekdam mm. clustered with 
meetings and leading people and initiatives and projects and blah 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 like mm. doing everything that i could i went to him just as a general catch up and uh, he heard me very patiently and then he said do whatever you want to do ankur but never become part of the problem and i like sunne mein to bahut acha lag raha hai mohit bolna kya chahte ho and just like you are today part of a lot of problems that you are trying to solve you are for example and that point of time like you are leading marketing mm. but you also want to solve for marketing and the truth is you can never solve for marketing if you are in marketing you can always solve for marketing you can only solve for marketing if you are outside of marketing mm. to get out of everything and then pick your battles don't become part of the problem and i found that fascinating and of course very interesting and insightful at that point of time and i've made this into almost a ritual where the purpose of any tool that i acquire money for me is a tool and the biggest purpose it serves is to abstract me from problems so that i can objectively look at something that is a problem and solve it yeah so money for me is an tool of abstraction an example i would pay money to abstract myself from say the cooking process mm. and the minute i do that i am objectively able to answer what is right and not right about the food that we eat but if i am the one making the food then i'll be emotionally involved yeah, just kar lo ha hum kar lo na ye to acha to mana hai na itna kya itni mehnat kare do ghante lag gaye pyaas kaatne mein like to then you become all of this person which is just the human tendency to do so yeah. but if you are detached from it abstracted from it mm. you suddenly have power over mm. the visualization of what that means and it's true for everything else yeah. so money for me is just so important as a tool of abstraction yeah and and i often tell people it's it's not a it's not a way for me to acquire st- status or fame or anything like that we're not materialistic as a family we love traveling and that's where we only spend our money but oh boy using money as a form of abstraction or as a tool mm. or a mechanism for abstraction 100% i'll always do that so that was great advice it was brilliant advice at that point of time don't become part of the problem that's actually true that also then pushes you away from being a micromanager oh yeah 100% you look at it, you look at it from a broad angle exactly. you you say okay one second i'm you're picking your like i think the picking your battles part is so important because we pick every battle right? we yeah. want to get everything so i will get in and i will solve this and again it's a whole like god complex right if i get into obviously it'll get solved but say no one second it's your problem i will help you but it's your problem to solve is exactly exactly you you spoke about going back in time should give a piece of advice to yourself as a kid what would it be aged uh, below 10 oh below 10 don't be so stuck up don't judge people don't think you are better than others don't think you know what is right or wrong your parents are not always right they are humans first and parents later yeah you're going to be okay i mean so many things that i would tell long <laughs> tell you a long list there's a long <laughs> list long but mostly i i you know I, i was really judgmental i was really judgmental and i'm not proud of who i was i used to i don't know if i uh, i mentioned this in the previous session that we have on podcast was i used to believe and i kid you not when i say believe it's like a all caps believe i used to believe that people who smoke and drink which was your class at that point mm. were bad people like evil yeah not in the sense that they were doing a bad thing now they were the ones who would bring the world to a shit place uh-huh. they were bad people, people. Like, they're not people who made bad choices no 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 they are bad people they get up with bad intention wahi aage ja ke murderer bante hain rapist bante hain terrorist bante hain wo gande log hain like i had that idea like kyunki this is a bad thing hmm. it for me smoking or drinking was not about making a choice or being influenced or something like it's like you consciously choose to do something that is bad hmm. because smoking is bad yeah God, I was like, and I was just so stuck up, and I was just so, yeah. Again, I said, I used to judge people, and like, क्या ही करेंगे इस ज़िंदगी में अपनी? 
पढ़ते लिखते हैं नहीं हर वीकेंड पे पार्टी करते हैं केबल टीवी लगा रखा है स्टार वर्ल्ड देखते रहते हैं बोल्ड एंड ब्यूटीफुल देखते हैं डिस्कवरी चैनल नहीं देखते आई वॉच बोल्ड आई वॉज आई एम टोटली दर्सन सॉरी फॉर ऑल दिंग्स आई वुड है I remember that when I was like seven, eight years old, and I walk out to my father. I'm saying, "Can I? When can I have a drink?" <laughs> He's like, "Not yet, sir. Not yet." But he said, "For the first time, you have it. Have it with me because I know you don't want do something random, uh, but not yet." So I have like very early recollections of like this is a so cool good. thing. I like the color. Yeah, you know? that's so cool. Um, and and um, and I eventually was I think my entire. group at that point of of kids i was one of the f- i was actually the first kid who had it really <laughs> and not with my father i snuck it out i snuck it out from his stash only which oh, he knows yeah. about now good but uh, slowly slowly i think raat ko thoda like <laughs> like <laughs> so bitter nature but uh, yeah it's just and also i think that if i have to think about my young self i would apologize for the fact that i was that kid who got everybody else in trouble but escaped like i would make the plan and then It's make somebody else execute so it like, like i was that guy who made someone get cockroaches you were the mafia don get someone to get cockroaches put in the class prefects pencil box so one person got cockroach one person put it whose plan was it mine My who God. got caught cockroach getter and put her put her matic <laughs> sab that is so incredible i i was never as smart as this yeah. yeah i would just sit in the corner and judge you but i would n- never be able to reciprocate like, even half of what he is the guy who got the cockroaches he was like yeah ye zindagi mein kuch nahi karega <laughs> Now I have to think about the young you judging. <laughs> young me is a good way to end this. <laughs> no, 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 no. I have to, as I said, apologize for the past. <laughs> yes, always, always. I think that's a very interesting note to wrap <laughs> this one up. But thanks, Agu. Thanks for coming on. Um, thanks for playing around with. What did you draw? Like, you drew the scenery. Bilkul. It's like Biswa. तुम देख रहे हो ये तो आई ड्रू आई डोंट नो हूज फेस दिस इज दिस इज नॉट योर फेस दिस इज नॉट योर फेस दिस इज अ फेस आई टेंट टू ड्रॉ फेसेस बट यस सो दिस एक्सपेरिमेंट ऑफ लिविंग स्टफ ऑन द टेबल हैज इट्स ऑलवेज गुड इट्स ऑलवेज टू लाइक यू डूइंग दिस बट ऑलवेज गुड थैंक्स सो मच फॉर कमिंग ऑन द शो थैंक यू सो मच दिस वाज दिस अ लवली कन्वर्सेशन फ्री फ्लोइंग आई लव्ड इट थैंक्स फॉर द थॉटफुल क्वेश्चंस आई ऑलवेज एंजॉय देम आई थिंक दैट्स वी वी नॉट इज दैट एज कॉलिन समीर कॉल इट्स द डीप एंड ऑफ दिस शो सो एट वी विल कॉल इट एन एपिसोड ऑसम